this will be somewhat of a repeat. Um, I'm going to measure an old uh, amp that I've probably videoed. I think I've showed this on a video before, um, but we're going to measure it with my new spectrum analyzer. And uh, if you're new, new, new to the channel, I seem to be getting quite a few more uh, subscribers. So um, I want to show you measuring a active device. I've showed some measuring maybe a filter, measuring a attenuator. Those are passive devices. This is an active device. It requires some voltage and it has amplification. So we have to be very, very careful when we measure this on a spectrum analyzer because it may output too much power and blow up your spectrum analyzer. You may actually enter too much power on the input of your amplifier and blow up the amplifier. Okay, let's get the spectrum analyzer set up the way we want it. Um, so marked on here, it says this amplifier is good from 500 megahertz to 1.3 gigahertz. Um, so let's just start at some... Uh, let's do a preset. Okay, we'll do a start frequency. Let's see 100 megahertz. We'll start there and we'll let it sweep. We'll let it sweep all the way. Now we're going to be using our tracking generator. So we need to turn that on. Uh, turn our tracking generator on. Now we can start thinking about the um, which level we want. Now um, that's the power that's going to be going into the amplifier and our amplifier is a 10 dB amplifier. So if we input minus 20 dBm we're going to output minus 10 dBm. So that sounds reasonable. So we're just going to, we're going to leave it alone there. All right. So we will need to um, calibrate, calibrate. Um, it's just a leveling uh, procedure or normalization procedure. So um, some people have said their spectrum analyzers, you just put the normalize button. It automatically does the store to ref and normalize both at the same time. What, for whatever reason, this software revision doesn't allow you to do that. You actually, it's grayed out. Normalize, normalize key is grayed out. It doesn't do anything. So you have to hit store reference and then, and then these now become things that you can do. And they're un, ungrayed and I can, I can zero it out. So anyway, so now we're normalized. Okay. All right. And so we have, instead of DBM over here, we now have DB. So now we're relative. Everything is a relative measurement from now, from now on. Okay. So if you have the signal going straight through, it's zero dB, all right? So we are going to connect the tracking generator to the, uh, to the input of the, uh, input of the amplifier here and the input of the spectrum analyzer. We will, we will put on the output here. All right. Okay. And um, it's kind of, I always find this interesting. You actually get a trace, <laughs> um, although it's going to be funny. It says it's minus 12 dB. It's a, it's a minus 12, it's a 12 dB attenuator <laughs> until we turn the power on. We have to turn the power on. So now I'm going to turn the power on to the device. And there we go. Now we're at positive uh, 10 dB of gain. So we can see we have 10 dB of gain everywhere. And uh, we have every 10 dB of gain from about, um, I'll use the marker here, from about 450 megahertz to 3.2 gigahertz. It's a bit bumpy and stuff. So if we want to um, get a better look at this, we can change the, uh, the units or the uh, divisions per, per uh, um, what am I trying to say, units per division? Yeah, uh, let's see here, amplitude. Uh, scale per division, that's it, scale per division. Uh, we can go even down to two. Let's try two dB. We need to get the uh, amplitude down here. We'll do trigger. We will set the reference position here to zero. There we go. So here is a plus two, four, six, eight. That's plus 10 dB of gain. And you can see it's a wiggly up and down, wiggly up and down, wiggly up and down. Now, uh, this may, this wiggly may be due to some reflections in the cables and stuff and some uh, mismatch between the amplifier. We don't know if this is a 50 ohm amplifier. Um, so we're going to do something. We're going to, we're going to, I haven't done this on the channel before, but we're going to use some pads. People are wondering why do, why do I say sometimes I say attenuators and sometimes I use pads. It means the same thing. It means the exact same thing. A pad is an attenuator. It's a passive attenuator attenuation device pad. Um, anyway, it's, it's a pad or attenuator is like a, a potato or a spud. It's the same, it's just different words for the exact same thing. Okay. So, so these are kind of padding. Um, a lot of times pad is kind of, uh, 
a way you use the thing, but yeah, I'm not going to get into that on the uh, on the channel here. Okay, so let's. Um, we need to do a new calibration because I am going to be inserting an attenuation, and we need to zero that out. So we need to have the uh, pads as part of the calibration process. Okay, what does that mean? I'm going to take my two pads. Uh, I'm going to, my, my attenuators here, I'm going to put one attenuator, two attenuators, so we're going to have, uh, these are 3 dB attenuators, okay? So here's uh, 6 dB total now. Uh, I'm going to uh, put those together. I need to have a female-female adapter so I can hook everything up. And uh, that was what I used for the through calibration last time was that little female adapter there. Hook this all up. Okay, so now, I'm going to do a through calibration of 60 of 6 dB. Okay, so we will do that here. Um, we will just for fun. I'm going to let's see, turn the reference level back to 50. That puts it in the that puts it in the middle, and uh, we are going to turn normalization off. And uh, let's see here. We are at minus 20. Okay, so um, we are still at two, two divisions, two dB for division. So there we go. So, so now, normally our through would be at minus 20 dB, okay? But I put in six dB of loss, so now it should be down here around minus 32, right? It'll be, it'll be um, or six dB. Six. Ah, we should be different than that. Well, I don't know why we're because we have so much attenuation. I'm going to change the tracking generator here, so we're going to have zero dBm. Um, do I want to do that? Yeah, no, I, I need minus ten. I'm going to change it to minus to minus ten. Okay, so that the generator is now outputting minus ten. And I'm going to put in 6 dB. Um, make sure these are six of uh, six threes. This is three, and this is yeah. This is three. Seems to be running a little low here, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We will store the reference, and then we'll normalize. So now we have a flat line, but we have uh, 6 dB of attenuation to it. Sorry, this video is making me ramble on. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to keep these two attenuators on the ends of our cables. So now, whatever we put between here will be the difference, right? We've already cal. If we put these two together, it would be zero dB apart, whatever the thing's gonna do, all right? So we will put a three dB pad on the front we will put a 3 dB pad on the back. And, um, and then we will turn on the power. And there we go. And the uh, thing is still measuring minus, uh, plus, plus 10 dB. Let's zoom in again. Let's change our uh, units here to 2 dB. It's off the top, so we'll go back to our tracking generator. We'll lower the reference position to zero. And there we go. There we go. Um, so I think the wigglies are smaller, right? So um, we could probably make them even smaller if we used a 6 dB pad or something. But I think for the measurement we're trying to make, um, we're doing really, really well. Now, some people may say, oh, well, you should measure that on a VNA. That, that could be true. Um, I think the very, very most accurate way to make this measurement is on something called an, a scalar network analyzer. And a scalar network analyzer uses true power sensors, and um, it is quite accurate. They are, they are big beasts. They are hard to set up. They are very expensive because you have to have multiple detectors, which are $1,000 each. And so it's just an expensive instrument. But a... Um, Scalar network analyzer would be a very nice thing, a very nice thing to have here. But I think we, what we can see here is that uh, this particular uh, amplifier, let me turn on the marker again, 
This particular amplifier does really well from about there all the way to about there. And then it goes up, it actually goes up to almost 12 dB of gain. So it actually, it's, there's only sort of a usable range here. So if I set the usable range to maybe, let's say that's uh, one end, and the other end, I'm just eyeballing it now, the other end maybe I'll say is right there, right about there. And I said that's the usable range, okay? And so um, one of the markers is at 596 megahertz. Um, I have 555 written on the, the on the machine, on, on the uh, amplifier here, and I have 1.3. And here it's good, yep. 1.27, so uh, 1.3 is probably pretty accurate. I think I was the one who created these labels, so I'm, I'm pretty sure I've done this measurement before, and that's why I put the numbers I did on it. Um, and so, yeah, I'm gonna stick with those numbers. You can use it above, you can use it here out to three gigahertz, but you have to be aware that it's no longer 10 dB gain, it's, it actually bumps up a bit. But if you put it in a system and you calibrate it out, it really doesn't matter, it's still usable up there, okay? But, uh, but, but to, to, be, to be aware of it. Okay, um, I hope my video edit's okay. I, I kind of stopped and started a few times. I had to put out trash and it's raining outside and stuff. But anyway, um, what I've showed was measuring a amplifier. Um, you might have a mismatch to your measurement devices that causes some ringing by putting in some external pads. You can dampen that ringing because um, both sides kind of see what they want to see and it kind of evens things out. Um, and uh, yeah, there you go.